Gators Breakdown. Because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown Podcast is ready to go. I'm your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at GatorDave underscore SEC. And we're wrapping up spring practice coverage. Orange and Blue game this weekend, of course. So we got a couple more coaches to hear from. New faces on the staff, especially on the defensive staff. We'll get to hear from Will Harris Harris, and Gerald Chapman, the DB coach, the defensive line coach for the Gators. Of course, taking over for Corey Raymond and Sean Spencer. Uh, A lot to get into, a lot to like about these two in front of the microphone. So uh, a new approach, of course, for the Gators here on on the on on the defensive side of the ball. But, you know, I think you're going to like what you hear (laughs) from from, from these two. So, um, you know. Unfortunately, you know, no more spring football to talk about. We'll have to wait till August and that Miami game roll, roll around before we get some real football. But uh, you know, been it's been fun, you know, covering this team this this uh, this spring and what we like and some concerns and the questions we still have. We won't get many answers, of course, till Florida runs out of the tunnel against Miami. But it's been fun hearing from the players, the new faces on the staff: Billy Napier, Austin Armstrong, Ron Roberts, as well uh, earlier. So it's been. It's been a lot of fun, you know, covering this team this spring and uh, plenty more uh, to get into right here uh, before the Orange and Blue game on Saturday. So hit that like button, subscribe right here on Gators Breakdown, right here on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. You'll get those notifications when there's a new Gators Breakdown. Leave some comments, your support, doing all that stuff really helps Gators Breakdown grow. And um, of course, you know, not forget Gators Breakdown Plus, you get those ad-free episodes, extra episodes. We're going to be doing some more chats, some uh, un- interesting chats coming up as well uh, that'll be just on the Discord, your tech side, of, the, the the texting side of it. Um, not not really a voice chat like we do sometimes, but uh, well, I'll announce those plans uh, later in the future. But uh, another plus for being a Gators Breakdown Plus member. Link is in the description to join. Hey, look, as little as $3 a month, really to help, really help support what we do right here on Gators Breakdown Maybe one day get enough and do it full time or something like that, you know, but uh, still spending a whole lot of time doing Gators Breakdown, Gators Breakdown Plus. And of course, do not forget this Saturday, it's the orange and blue game. Of course, it is brought to you by Florida Victorious. Guys, let's go. Be the difference and become a member now. Florida Victorious will host a meet and greet this Saturday. Meet and greet autograph signing for its members with head coach Billy Napier and Gator football players following the orange and blue game. This look, it's a no brainer. Help support the players, get access to players. And you can get benefits too. use code Gators BD. When you sign up for 20% off your first month at Florida victorious link is in the description to join that as well. All right, let's keep it going. Spring practice coverage. Will Harris. He got on the podium uh, earlier this week. And all I can say is, Wow, I was I was impressed. I am sold on his approach uh, here. You know, hopefully this trickles down to the players as well. Yes, I know it's just words. We all I, I know that. I've done it so far, so good, and hopefully it, it does make a difference there to the players and on the field. You know, if he's like this on the field compared to um, in, in front of a mic and the communicator that he is, it's an easy sell. Um, says he grew up watching Florida. And he takes this job as a challenge coming from the NFL, says the situation is exciting. He took it as a challenge and, quote, get to play some of the best teams in the country. Who doesn't want that? And then he ends that with, quote, I have the group to get it done in the quote. Also, he's a believer in Billy Napier, says he and Billy Napier have, quote, similar things as far as faith and family goes. And that meeting did it for him in wanting to make sure, quote, we get this right for Billy Napier. So to get his press conference started, Harris was asked about the scheme at Florida, how it fits with what he has worked with in the past. And he responds that he worked in, he's worked in every scheme and system out there, compares Florida scheme to what we have seen recently at Georgia and Bama as far as scheme goes in recent years, uh, and something that he is familiar with. So he picked it up quickly. He's been in a lot of systems after playing for Pete Carroll in college and says he's taken the different pieces from them all, applies it to wherever he's at, whatever scheme he is in. Did say he likes his corners to play press, especially when he has the long corners that Florida currently has, uh, but it's like chess and have to use the pieces 
right. Says a successful defense like he had at Washington in 2021 starts with connections and relationships. Um, That's when people run through walls for one another. Then, quote, communication breeds understanding. And that's what he's trying to bring here to Florida. Quote, once we're all on the same page, we're all good. And if we're not, you guys know what? That turns into a touchdown. End the quote. And look, there were a lot of touchdowns put on this defense uh, last season. A lot of touchdowns been put on this Florida defense the last few seasons. Uh, And there were a few reasons for that. Lack of tackling, lack of turnovers, and giving up explosives. Here's Will Harris on trying to fix all of those issues for this Gators defense this spring. Well, the biggest thing, and this goes back to all my mentors, is, hey, when you get a job, go look at the explosive plays. It'll it'll paint a picture for you. Um, You go and look at it, and let's be real, you guys seen the games, right? So we just talk about it. we got to fix the tackling. Um, point blank period, and that's the emphasis of me and the rest of our staff, um, just making sure that we get that fixed, especially in the back end. We talked about that a lot. And then, um, you know, just protecting the deep part of the field. When I talk to our guys, and they'll all ask you, it's two things that I'm always about. Like, we got to protect Gator Nation. And it's my job, your jobs, everybody's jobs. And that's how we protect it, by making sure we have a backstop. Um, so those are really two of the most important things that I saw that needs to get fixed. And like I said, at the end of the day, it just comes back to, you know, the communication part of it. I feel like our communication, once we get that back on track, everything will be fine. How about the balance of that also protecting the back of the field and making plays up? Because there were only three interceptions last year. Yeah, and that's so a big – that's not nah, that's, that's a huge emphasis, you know. It's either ours or nobody's. I'm sure some of the guys already said that. Like, that ball is either ours or nobody's. And so that's the mindset we got to have. And then knowing that, we got to, you know, as a staff, we talk about it scheme wise. Like, we got to make sure that we come up with the right scheme, too, to create those. And then you get what you emphasize. You know, this spring has been really good. We got a bunch of turnovers, but just continue to emphasize that every single day. That is a, that's a, one of them that I looked at and made sure we got to fix as well. How do you get a team to tackle that? I mean, it, it seems it's such a basic thing, tackle. Yeah, we're creatures of habits. We're creatures of habits. The more and more you do something, the more and more it becomes a habit. It's just like anything else you do. You brush your teeth, you tie your shoe. We do it every single day. I start every single one of my indies off with tackling, and I I emphasize it. So I just believe if you continue to just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again, you know, they'll get it. Um, I've had a lot of success with, you know, the the dog tackle is what people will call it, um, with the hat placement out of the rugby tackle. Um, so that's kind of like what I've evolved into, and then knowing that it's safe and efficient for our guys. Um, when I was at the University of Washington, we only had one concussion, and that was because his hat placement was in front. And, um, you know, I just emphasized the heck out of that, more importantly, just to make sure that my guys are safe. And then knowing that, I believe this. If you're going to tackle somebody, you have to take the engine out. It's just like anything else. It's a big rig, yeah, but if you take that engine out, it ain't going nowhere. And so at the end of the day, that's what I tell our guys. You need to go low, and we got to go in the strike zone. And if all of them don't come up here and answer the strike zone the right way, let me know. But it's the bottom of the numbers, top of the kneecaps. That's our aiming point. I think the tackling, man, you know, a lot of people is stuck in their ways about how they tackle. Um, For me, I'm really big on overemphasizing that part of it. And I know Coach Napier was talking about that as well in the uh, interview. When you look, excuse me, to Kevin's point, three interceptions, I think they gave up. 15 or yeah. maybe even 18 30 yard pass yeah. plays is like almost last in the nation yeah. in both categories. It, what, I mean, that's a lot. You got a lot of room to grow. Mm. What gives you confidence that that you guys can kind of get into the upper half of yeah. the third even? I mean, what are the goals and what are the expectations? Everything I said earlier, I don't even talk about last year. Last year is over with. Mm-hmm. We're talking about now. Um, You're aware for, though, of course. I'm very aware. I mean, I, to, take, to take this job, you got to be aware of it. <laughs> You'd be fooled not to. Um, but no, seriously, I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing for us is we go back to it. You got to be able to protect Gator Nation. And our job is to eliminate the explosive, get the ball back and score. That's our job as the back end. And then obviously we will say enforce our will on our opponent. And so as we go through those things, it's literally what I mean by protect Gator Nation is we are always going to have someone in the deep part of the field. Because just like you said, explosive plays is the easiest way of getting beat. Um, and so we can all go back and talk about last year, but the point of emphasis this spring is obviously making sure we protect that part of it, and then only that, the tackling, and obviously the takeaways. So just emphasizing it. Like I said, I always get up here and tell you, like, hey, we're creatures of habits. You are what you emphasize, and so that's something we emphasize every single day. Man, I tell you, I, I took a lot away from that. I was, I was you know, this, his interview was on Tuesday. I was staying up late. And I, you, if you're on social media, you saw me. I'm like, here I am, 10:30 at night, hyped as I can be, 
listening to Will Harris talk about what he wants to fix at Florida, all the issues he needs to fix at Florida, eliminate explosives. You know, a lot of those reasons, a lot of those issues led to explosive plays. Explosive plays are their own issue. But what led to those explosive plays? Right, not getting turnovers. You know, you have a chance a 50-50 ball in the air. Who comes down with it? The opposing receiver came down with it. You as a cornerback, you as a safety have a chance to make a tackle. You didn't make a tackle. That play that could have been a 8, 10, 15-yard gain turns into a 40-yard gain because you couldn't tackle. You know, so, yeah, explosives were an issue, but explosives were an issue because of some of the basics of football not being taken care of at Florida. So now, I mean, you, you, you hear it. it. It is being emphasized. It may be overemphasized. There's no such thing. Uh, Will Harris, my friend, there's no such thing as overemphasizing it. We've seen it. You know, I, there's you can't overemphasize tackling. You can't overemphasize the issues Florida has had. So to fix these issues, Harry Harris said, you know, he told Coach Napier, this is one of the most talented groups I've had as far as height, length, and speed. He says, pair that with experience, and they have something. Jason Marshall has 1,910 snaps. Asa Turner, 1,790 snaps. Turner, the Asa Turner, though transfer from Washington, Turner started for Harris at Washington as a freshman. Calls Turner a, calls Turner a general on the back end that has played a lot of ball. Says Jordan Castell's experience as a freshman can still go a long way as he's polishing up from his offseason surgery. And then DJ Douglas is a pro, an example for young players how to approach the game in taking care of their body so they are available. And he ends his take on the players by saying, ultimate separator is watching film. The guys are doing a good job of doing that and watching film with Harris, but ultimately, offenses give a lot away by formations. So the study part of the game is the separator. So uh, one player that doesn't have experience but is getting rave reviews is Aaron Gates. In his second year here uh, at Florida, Harris says very athletic, can play anywhere in the secondary. Right now, it's about finding the right place for him. As far as the star spot where Gates is right now battling, quote, I just think that that role is multiples of everything. Like that person can be a blitzer. He can be in the box. We can have him in the deep part of the field. You know, we got him man to man in the slot. I just think that position has got to be one of those athletic guys. But not only that, a very smart guy as well, understanding what's going on within the defense. And we got some really good ones back there. Aaron Gates, we've got Sharif Denson, and we got Josiah Davis working that right now in the quote. So altogether, Harris says, quote, I do think we have a really deep unit right now. We've got depth. And so it's just finding the right guys and moving around and finding the right five to play. There we go. There's you're on the field, but recruiting is also part of this, of course. And Gators going through that right now. A lot of prospects on campus for practices and scrimmages. This coming up week at the spring game as well. So as far as recruiting, Billy Napier mentioned that that stood out about Harris. And in this press conference, Harris stated, "Quote: I just love connections. I, I believe in relationships, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I got into this game." because I had a coach of mine who helped me through some tough, really hard times, and it came back from recruiting. He ended this statement, he understands how recruiting and the relationship of NIL is real. Not hiding behind that fact. <laughs> so look, it just seems like to me with Will Harris here, a, a more deliberate approach here by Harris compared to that of Corey Raymond. Doesn't mean he's as good as a pure coach. I have no idea. I'm not going to pretend to say he is. I'm not going to pretend to say he isn't. I have no idea. Corey Raymond was a huge disappointment at Florida. Corey Raymond, I was hoping. Now, I brought it up when he was hired that, you know, this LSU defenses the last couple of years he was there weren't really any good. The secondary wasn't any good. That continued at Florida. I hope it continues more at LSU now that, that he's going back to LSU. But I have no idea, pure coaching wise if Will Harris is going to be any better than Corey Raymond. But if he's a good coach and can get his players to take after him from what we've seen and heard, I know that's a lot to put behind words. You know, That's a lot of emphasis to put on that side of it. But if he's a good coach, and this approach that he's 
shared with us and kind of his, uh, you know, his demeanor in this you know, press conference, maybe I'm making too much of that. I probably am. But just hearing how he approaches it as well, just taking away how he explained everything in the press conference, you know, his demeanor in the press conference, but the way he teaches, the way he wants to teach, what he's looking for, all that may be a better package overall for Florida. So excited about Will Harris there. I, I like what I like what I had to hear. Like what I had to hear. Uh, so before we move on to the defensive line group, let's hear from Devin Moore on Will Harris and bouncing back from an injury riddled career so far. Aside from from being an athlete, what, what's he brought to to the defensive back room as a whole? Who you think? Uh, you talking about Coach Harris, right? Yeah, yeah. Just a lot of energy. Uh, you know, from day one, he showed up. Uh, you know, we had a meeting as a group. You know, talked about real personal stuff to you know really develop that bond as a uh, back end. So uh, you know, just from that day, and he just brought energy every day after that. You know, really, really a lot of he he's preaching a lot of togetherness because if we all on the same page, then. You know, it's going to be a challenge. What's been his evaluation of your game and what he thinks about you and what you need to work on? Uh, yeah, so he's, uh, you know, at Washington, he's had a few long corners he coached that proved to be very successful. So, you know, here and there, he'll compare me to them. And, uh, you know, he, he preaches it just like me, technique. You know, if I can be a great technician, not even have to use any of my physical traits, then that's when, you know, that's when the game gets real scary. So, you know, just being able to learn and, Everything that he tells me, write it down, go rep it, work it, all the extra time and work too. I was definitely at my lowest a few moments between that season. But you know, the support I have for my teammates, coaches, you know, uh, training staff, I took a lot of lessons out of it, how to treat my body way better. You know, it's all about the things you eat, you know, just the little things. All the little things I can do to just prevent any of that stuff from happening. So well, what that's what you, I kind of took away from it. Yeah, you look like you reshaped your body, but you yeah. probably maybe couldn't do some of that because of the injuries. Mm -hmm. What was kind of your off-season approach, and what are some of the gains you've made? Uh, my off-season approach is just work hard, trust my coaching, and you know just grow with my teammates. Uh, you know, I, I did gain a few pounds. Uh, you know, got leaner, faster, bigger, stronger. You know, those type of things. But that's that's uh, credit to the coaching staff and the strength staff. You know, they put a lot of hard work in to develop individual programs for all of us. So, yeah, What, what are we going to see with you at your best? I don't know that we've seen that yet. Uh, you're just going to see, you know, just a guy just giving receivers all they can handle, really. You know, I play. I like to play a lot really physical because uh, I feel like I got the speed to run. And then, you know, my coaches, they uh, – they help me with my technique, you know, try and be a real technician too, not just rely on physical traits, you know, just try and be a real technician as if I was like really unathletic and things of that nature. So, you know, trying to be a real technician and then just add the physical traits on top of it. What part of your game do you think that you've improved upon the most from last year? Um, I definitely say technique. You know, I put a big emphasis on that because uh, I feel like it would just be a bonus to add my physical traits on top of that. and. You know, just being able to uh, learn from Coach Harris, uh, you know, just bring all the new knowledge he brought and just apply it on the field. How many different different injuries have you had over the last two years, and how <laughs> tough has that been to deal with? Uh, I'm not really sure. You know, I had a couple, and, you know, I, I, I honestly just see it as lessons and, uh, you know, just being healthy, how big of a blessing it is, and, yeah. you know, just – giving the man above the thanks that I'm healthy uh, to play this game that I love. Anything that could keep nagging into this year or are you? No, nah, I feel I feel 100% healthy. I'm you know, ready to turn it loose. Ready to turn it loose, man. I, I'm so ready for Devin Moore to be able to turn it loose on a consistent basis. I mean, the best uh, the best ability is the availability, of course, and the overused statement for a player fighting through injuries. But when he's been on the field, he's been so good. Uh, and he's got that 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 size you just want. I mean the the length, uh, how, you know, how how tall he is, how physical he is. I mean he's be, he's able to be physical because of the of the the size presence he's put out there at that cornerback spot. I think that's why he's just been shining when he's been out there on the field. It's just we haven't been able to see enough of it. And it's just, it just seems like it's just a different injury. I mean it's, it's been a shoulder. It's been a concussion out of nowhere. You know just a you know I guess last year going into the LSU game. So. Um, hopefully for, for, for Devin Morris, a guy that can be on the field and give Florida, you know, Jason Marshall is going to take that step in his so, so contract year and Devin Moore, uh, 
finally being healthy. Some competition in the room, too, with D.D. and, and, and Jakeem Jackson. I mean, I, it gives Florida some, some depth there at the corner spot, but Florida's going to be at their best when Jason Marshall and Devin Moore are back there at corner together. Uh, so it, it makes that entire defense better. We saw the playmaking ability of him last year with the interception uh, against Tennessee. He's had a great spring so far, um, been able to just be on the field, uh, and hopefully that translates uh, into the season of a guy we see you know, game in and game out, 12 games next year. Uh, it's just Florida defense is going to take those massive big steps that may be possible. And if they're going to take steps, you know, Devin Moore could be a part of that. But I think if they're going to take the big step, the something we may not expect to see, Devin Moore could be part of that. So hopefully he's on the field a good bit this fall. So, all right, let's go up front. Another new face on staff that is creating a lot of buzz, of course, is defensive lineman coach Gerald Chapman. He's got this intense coaching style that's you know really shaking things up at spring camp. Uh, he bring if you've heard um, you've seen the practice highlights on social media, um, the booming voice out there on the, on the practice field, and you can see he brings the same high energy to coaching that he wants his defensive lineman to bring on the field. It's clear that Chapman's all about passion and focus, and he's setting the bar high for his players. Uh, a much needed approach on that side of the ball, of course. It's just kind of been lackadaisical, uh, you know, with the, the, the approaches of you know, Sean Spencer and a Corey Raymond, and two new faces here, and this one up front uh, with Chapman. So let's hear from Gerald Chapman and his time so far at Florida, what he brings to the table. I'm, I'm intense. I mean, can't caring about the guys. Um, you know, I, I mean, I love I love these players. Uh, I, I would say authentic personality. Uh, I am who I am, uh, and that's what I expect them to be. Um, I want them to be authentic. I want them to be who they are. So, where'd you where'd you kind of learn your style? Um, you know, I was you know my coaching style. Um, I wouldn't say I really necessarily learned it from anyone. I think it's just who I am, um, and. Uh, you know, I, I think you know, I, I, you know. When I got into coaching, um, I, I understood right away that attention to detail is important. Um, you know, you know, coaching defensive line is is, is a huge demand. You know, we're trying to get these guys. Uh, it's very demanding what they do, um, and so I, I coach them the way I expect them to play. Uh, intense, uh, with detail, discipline, uh, re relentless mentality. Um, effort, urgency, and so uh, if I expect them to uh, play that way, then I have to coach them that way. I have to, co I have to be detailed with our progression and our drills uh, and our technique and our fundamentals. I think our biggest thing is um, hasn't been necessarily trying to focus on one leader. I think we've been really trying to focus on be, being a united group um, because that's what we need to put um, that's what we need to put out there. You know, that's how we need to play. We need to play as a united group. And I think uh, when you have that in a D-line room, like you guys have said, it's a very demanding position. It's a very intense position. And so, hey, guess what? You know, um, not everybody's going to show up and have a good day, you know. And so when you got multiple guys that uh, can provide the juice, provide the energy, can be encouraging or be demanding uh, when it's not your day, that's good because they can help you get through you know, that day or that play or that series uh, or that practice. So um, I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's been necessarily a one guy. I think it, all of them are work, working together uh, to push each other and hold each other accountable. How much did you look at tape from last year to see what you were inheriting? And, and what were your thoughts, if you did look at that, what were your thoughts from that? And where do you think the group needs to take a step based on what you saw? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, absolutely. When I, you know, took the job, um, you know, went back and, Basically made a cut up uh, of each guy, each individual guy, and, and pointed out some things they did well, uh, and then just pointed out some things they needed to fix from a technique standpoint. I think defensive line play is all—it's all technique, it's all attack, it's all mentality, it's all discipline. Um, so just sharpening up some of the techniques and um, you know making sure that we can consistently be disciplined with our eyes and footwork and different things like that. Um, I think that um, I think that, that that's what we've emphasized on. Uh, during identity and in the spring, and um, you know I think it's getting better, and I think that uh, we uh, we still have some ways to go, but 
Um, but I think we're, we're chopping away at it, and, and it's getting better. And uh, the mentality, the mentality piece was was big for me. And sometimes, I, I don't know. Sometimes you can see a little mentality on tape, but once you really get around and you're present, um, then you really know. Once you start working with the guys and talking to them and see it, you see how they practice and body language, and you see. Um, you know how, the urgency from drill to drill. You know those are the things. Those are the things that I focused on. You know, just coming in right away. Mm, sounds like he could see maybe last year in watching this team, watching this defensive line, that the mentality wasn't right. And he, of course, you know it's a new face, and we're going to hear the good things. And there's a different approach here, and maybe a more aggressive approach here. And, and, and hopefully that is the case. Hopefully that's what we see pay off in the fall. Now let, let's move up front. Let's talk some of these players, Gerald Chapman. Uh, has under his wing right now. Look at the kind of the depth chart, maybe looking at what it would look like Saturday, of course, in the fall as well. Probably looks something like this. Cam Jackson at nose tackle, of course. Joey Slightman at defensive tackle. We talked about the edge group last week. Justice Boone and or Tyreek Sapp at the edge F spot. TJ Searcy at that edge Jack spot. But, you know, behind Jackson at nose, Jamari Lyons, Desmond Watson, of course. Um, behind Slightman at defensive tackle, Caleb Banks, Kelby Collins, uh, Chapman went on to describe Kelby Collins as, quote, unique. Had success last year, and now he's back, and so back in the system again. I think he's versatile, which is great. And the more versatile guys you can have is really good. You know, he can fill some roles, and I think he's doing a good job. He's vocal amongst the group. He does bring some leadership towards the group. It's good having him be part of the room and part of the unit. In the quote. Uh, if we go back last week, Mike Pearson credits Collins for not batting an eye when he was asked to change positions. You know, even though he was an all SEC freshman last year at the edge spot, switch positions anyway. So after primarily working with the edge unit in his first year, Collins has, a, you know, has been seen and pretty much confirmed now is working with the interior defensive line quote, as of right now, it's long-term Collins said, it's just spring. So you never really know on the move inside quote. I'm open to anything. I have the confidence and the skill to know that wherever I'm going to do what I do, I'm going to do what, what I do. So there kind of messed that quote up a little bit, but, <laughs> um, but you know, the skill to, to know that wherever I move, I'm going to do what I do there. Let me clean that one up uh, in the quote. So Collins believe, you know, that his versatility will benefit the defensive front you know, only weighing 275 in the spring, uh, considered you know might be might be considered undersized for for an interior defensive lineman. But Collins has improved his physique and skills, and he's confident that that will yield results. "Quote: I think I can bring versatility on the front. Obviously, being a smaller interior rusher, I can bring some speed when we need to pass rush. I can also go back outside to the five and still bring that physicality and speed that we may need if we put in a different package." Stuff like that, Collins discussed, you know, what he could contribute to the Gators this year. Quote, just being selfless and whatever the team needs, I feel like I'm able to do. So Collins, Collins you know, playing that same position as, as Banks and Slackman and true freshman DeAndre Robinson. Uh, Banks shared that Collins has faced difficulty with one aspect of his position change so far, uh, but shouldn't be cause for concern. Banks said, quote, double teams will get him, but we're going to help him through this. He's adjusted very well. I think he's going to make a great impact on the defensive line. That was from Caleb Banks. So, of course, with Collins moving to the defensive line room, there's a I think there's a ton to like about that room and the depth they bring. I think the ceiling is high for that group now with this with this change and having a year of experience with Jackson and and uh, Banks bringing Slackman in. Jamari Lyons I think flashed a, a good bit last year as well. Uh, so. Pair all that together with the transfer portal, Kelby Collins moving in. I think, you know, the floor has been raised uh, with the return of Jackson Banks, Lions, and Watson to go along with the additions of, of Slackman and Collins. I, I really like uh, the floor of this group now. Hopefully, you know, you have some guys live up to some recruiting rankings like a Kelby Collins, uh, Joey Slackman and his play at Penn and highly rated in the transfer portal to go along with, you know, Jackson, who was supposed to come in and did have an immediate impact last year. I don't know if he necessarily stood out like we thought he would, but he was a huge contributor for this Florida defense. Now we're just looking for elevation of play. So let's keep it going. And Chapman was, you know, also asked specifically what's great about Joey Slackman. Quote again, he fits the mold 
of leadership here, what we stand for. He's disciplined, always in the film room, or he's probably in my office right now waiting for me to watch film, watch this practice. But he brings a great, a great work ethic. It's good to have him part of the unit because it's contagious now. On the field, high effort, attention to detail. He's working the technique, and he's getting better. And on adjusting to this level of the SEC, quote, I think he's adjusting great. Like I said, he has the right mentality to test the physicality, and he's on his own. He's making plays. So Cam Jackson also lent his voice to Chapman's, Chapman's praise for Slackman, highlighting his leadership skills with the defensive line room. He emphasized that Slackman is quick to hold his teammates accountable, even to the point of reprimanding them during practice. <laughs> Jackson quoted, well, when Joey be crunk, he be crunk, Jackson said. If you're out there not doing the job, he's going to tell you about it. So I like that about Joey, him just coming in and having leadership role in the quote. Caleb Banks also chimed in, bringing another perspective on Slackman's leadership. He showed how Slackman you know, helps keep them motivated, especially during challenging times. Banks said, quote, he helps me to be motivated when I'm feeling down. He's like, come on, Caleb, let's go. I like that. We've accepted him as a newcomer, but it was quicker than usual. Like he was getting along with everybody trying to be a leader as soon as he came in, in the quote. So to keep this defensive line preview going, let's hear from Cam Jackson on his return and more. Uh, I'm in the same boat as Graham, Montreal, and Jason Marshalls, and we ain't finished how we wanted to finish last year. Um, I felt like it was a bad taste in all of our mouth. So with me coming back, I, um, I feel like – there was really improvement for all of us, um, cause I could, like you said, I could have left and went on to the Reese Senior Bowl or East West Shrine Bowl, but me just coming back to play with them guys, like we got unfinished business to take care of. So, so it was less a personal choice. Like I, oh, I got information back from the NFL that I need to work on ABC, and more of the team had unfinished business. Um, yeah, it was more of that. Um, I also talked to my mom a lot too, because like. Me being 21, there's, it's a hard decision trying to make on my own. So uh, I just talked to her, talked to my family, and we sat down. We talked to Coach Napier and all of them, and that was my decision to come back. We just I'm probably pushing a degree, too. Yeah. <laughs> we just got Coach Chapman, and what, what's he kind of brought to the next this year? Um, Coach Chapman, he brings a lot of energy. Um, he holds us accountable. Um, he also makes sure, like, we're going to have fun with it, but we, but we also go out there and work. Um, if you know him, like, he's a, he, if you probably not seen him, he's an exciting guy. So it's fun having him around. Um, he's a great coach, and I um, love having him coaching me. Have you been coached that hard by somebody before, that, that loudly, let's say, by a coach before? <laughs> um, no, nah, I, nah, I ain't had nobody like that. Um, you can hear Coach Chapman, like, from a mile away. Uh -huh. So, um, <laughs> It just like like I said, it's good having him um, around me. Like he's teaching me a lot, and I feel like I didn't improve from last spring to this spring. What is, what is his big message? I'm sorry. What what, what is his, what is the big message for you guys? What's his overriding theme, I guess, for playing defensive line? Um, he basically just he basically tell us just go out there and whoop blocks and just be aggressive, and that's what we go out there and do. And I feel like um, the whole D-line has improved, it have improved a lot. What does he get on you the most about? Staying low. He tell me to stay low because I like, I be telling him like it's hard trying to stay low because I'm like 6'6", six, six, but I try to work on it a lot, but he, he get on me by staying low. Have you improved? Yeah, I have a lot. He like so that the intensity was necessary for you guys. How, how much has that helped you, his intensity? Um, I feel like it helped us a lot. Um, like I said, um, you have you got me, Caleb, KLB Collins just joined us. Um, and you got the young guys, Makai and DeAndre. So I feel like his intensity on us, like it's helping us improve a lot. So when the season get here, you know, we can show everybody like you. You, how do I want to say this? We can basically show everybody what we done been through, from, starting from winter all the way leading up to the season. Is there an area where you feel like you need to take a step forward based on how last year went and what you guys want for yourself this year? Um, I feel like I, my pass rush, for sure. Um, I've been working on that a lot, and 
like I said, just staying low and just um, lean them guys. All right, accountability is going to be the theme for this room, it seems like. You know, there's been some talk that there wasn't much under previous defensive line coach Sean Spencer and you know, had players not doing what was needed or asked of them and getting away with it. Now we always hear things like that about outgoing coaches and what went wrong. So, you know, that, that is step one in getting all that cleared up and fixed if it was an issue. You know, something like this doesn't need to happen from the top down, regardless. Uh, it, it doesn't that it needs to happen in the first place. You know, accountability and physicality are the two main issues in this group. But, you know, that accountability there, you know, that starts at the top. Uh, you know, and, and if coaches weren't doing their job and it fed down to the players, you know, that's a Billy Napier issue for, for the guys you've hired. Now, obviously, it did not take long after the season. We saw Sean Spencer out, Corey Raymond out. You know, there's guys obviously not fitting into the vision Billy Napier is trying to put together uh, right right now. So let, maybe lesson learned. Uh, but, you know, accountability may be an issue. But accountability, physicality, two main issues in this group. Uh, mentality has been a key word. You heard that a whole lot. And for me, that mainly goes, you know, to the physicality, of course, you know, getting pushed around, not being able to be in position to make a tackle or, or a play come to mind, young players not being ready physically, but a lot of that is mindset. Uh, so uh, all the right things being said, Chapman has been, you know, noticed in practice in and practice out as a no nonsense in your face, tough love support uh, it, with his approach there. So of course, um, you, you hope the, the new face, the new voice in, in that room uh, shows its, you know, shows its worth in, in the fall and, and really turn around this group. You know, it's, it's going to take more than just words, uh, of course, technique, physicality, all that stuff going to come into play to get better play up front. Uh, a little deeper there, hit the transfer portal there. Uh, but of course, now got to put it all together. All this stuff sounds nice <laughs> on the surface. Uh, more from Caleb Banks before we go. Banks says he set a goal for himself in the offseason to add weight in order to more effectively handle double teams. He successfully gained five pounds, bringing his total weight to 325. Uh, but at the same time, remarkably, he also managed to slim down by shedding 10 pounds of body fat. Uh, how did he accomplish this? He says, quote, I had to stop eating fruit snacks and honey buns. Honey buns are bad for you. Don't eat them because they're bad for you. <laughs> so in the quote there, so you know, in an effort to promote healthier habits, he switched to a diet of salads and turkey burgers and says he, okay, he can, he can deal with that. <laughs> so uh, did a little bit of dedication there uh, for Caleb Banks. So uh, of course, Banks, everybody else subjected to rigorous coaching by Chapman this spring, uh, this intense coaching style while challenging uh, to endure at times has been embraced by Banks. And he reflected on this by saying, quote, I'm not going to lie. It will get me going. I know I don't take anything to heart. Don't take anything serious. I understand it's all business. He appreciates the you know, toughness, the rigorousness uh, of this coach, uh, of coach Chapman stating, quote, I want him to do that as a coach. So I'm happy he does that by yelling at me a little bit. He wants me to improve and be great. So I'm all here for it. I love it. So there we go. Accountability, a new approach uh, in the defensive front, the defensive backfield. We all know it needs, I mean, everything needs to, have, whether it's change, whether it's adaptability, everything needs to come together for the side of the ball that has doomed Florida for the last few seasons. It just has not been, I mean, for so long, you can just count on Florida to have a good defense. And that just that hasn't been the case. Uh, and whether it be the same reasons year in and re year out, different reasons year in and year out, it's not Gator football on that side of the ball for now four seasons in a row. We keep saying, man, there's no way it can be as bad as last year. And in some ways, they find a way for it to be as bad as the year before, or sometimes maybe marginally better in some categories. But overall, just terrible defense for four years in a row. So. New faces coming in, Billy Napier getting rid of Corey Raymond, Sean Spencer, um, you know, guys that he didn't have much of a history with. So on the way out, soon after the season, and these two new you know, younger faces uh, to, 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 for, for Harris and Chapman, maybe that's a, a little bit better relationship to the players, but certainly a, a new look here for the Gators on that side of the ball. Ron Roberts as well. Uh, so... 
certainly a makeover on that side of the ball. Hopefully they can put it all together fast for a much-needed turnaround in Billy Napier's third season. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. I am your host, David Waters. You can find me on social media at GatorDave underscore SEC. Got, hope you guys enjoy the orange and blue game. Of course, we'll be back next week, maybe Sunday, of course, you know, to give feedback of the game, what happened on Saturday. Uh, Jonathan DeCoster, the offensive line coach, new offensive line coach, is supposed to speak late Thursday. Don't know if I'll get an episode in, you know, given that spring game's just a couple days away. Um, it'll be late Thursday if I do or Saturday. So probably just may just hang on to that one for the uh, after the spring game coverage. So we'll see. But if not before then, everybody have fun at the orange and blue game. Go take part, become a Florida victorious member. Go get meet Billy Napier, meet your favorite players, get the autographs. Link is in the description to join. You get a discount as well using promo code GatorsBD, 20% off. So take advantage, take advantage of it. That'll do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. I'm your host, David Waters. Find me on social media, at GatorDave underscore SEC. Guys and girls out there, thank you for joining me on this episode of Gators Breakdown.